Alrighty, in this video I'm just going to go over my first reactions of the new league and give my feedback or what I think of it. So here, let's watch the trailer real quick. What drives you, exile? Is it justice? Revenge? Honor? No. It is power. That's different flame blast there. Felt their shock waves ripple through the void. Oh, that's kind of cool, like a ricochet support. You have our attention. Now you must keep it. Your limits will be tested. Break them. Do what is thought impossible. And the Atlas will follow. Atlas passive trees. Wow. Rework descendancies. Okay, so it's an ascendancy. Hopefully, harvest isn't garbage. Like it was before. Ritual League. Not expecting the league to be too much just because of the big end game change. The stars themselves will bear silent witness. How far will you bend before you break? Interesting. Looks okay so far. Alright, let's see what we got here. Uh, you gain even more control over endgame, specializing each video in Idolist as its own passive tree, crafting watchstones to refine your rewards, selecting up the 10 map bosses to fight at the same time. Okay, interesting. Rituals, Axe Pack Ritual League. Um, I'll or beyond the borders of Atlas Worlds, no. Can't talk right now. First such visitor is entirely called the Marvin. She is hungry. Or Maven, I guess. There's no R in that. Survival against the Atlas. Most dangerous foes, accept her challenge and put your talents and mortality to the test. Should you prove worthy, she will offer you a taste of her vast power. By slaying three map mobs bosses in the maven's presence you'll earn an invitation to her realm where she'll request that you defeat three bosses at the same time having demonstrated your strength she challenges you to defeat four bosses and five and six and ten ten you can take on a new pinnacle boss the atlas okay that seems like my uh blade vortex thing will be good for that take control of your atlas by unlocking passive trees all right let's see what we got here Ooh, wish i knew what those were oh here we go a legion encounter, legion and powerful beyond, so you can get beyond. Strong boxes are corrupted. Cures and monsters and areas are at least magic. That'd be good for EXP, I guess. That's kind of cool. Harvest monsters. Breaches have increased air of effect. Monster density. Double cell fight. So harvest double bonuses. Alright, that's kind of neat. So it kind of like makes the league mechanics a little more better, I guess. New endgame rewards, Atlas of the Atlas, track craftsful walk stones. These valuable endgame allow you to upgrade your Atlas and boost what types of rewards you'll find from maps. Players who are able to earn these powerful rewards will find that they strictly they are strictly better than regular watch stones. They can be traded, don't expire with use, and benefits can stack. Another new endgame reward is the Maven's Orb. This affects items that have two or more influence modifiers when used on such item. Randomly upgrades one of those influence modifiers and removes the other. 
the modifier that is being upgraded is already at its highest tier or upgraded to a new elevated tier. Okay. I'm going to flask gain a charge every three seconds. That's pretty good. New maps. The Ritual League, Twisted Spires of Flesh, scattered across their unknown. Pitch you against both the arcane powers and close with each successful ritual area. It's, it's harder and offers better rewards. Okay, so it seems like they can be kind of uh, chained in a way, it seems. So a monster during ritual, you earn a tribute, which can be spent for variety of seductive items and rewards. Among these rewards, you'll be offered a new ritual base types, which pair very powerfully, or very powerful implicit mods with challenging drawbacks. You can consume some tribute to re-roll the rewards off offered or defer selected ones until later. Okay, interesting. You are crushed. Yeah. Reduced. No, that's pretty bad for Blade Vortex, but enhance your rituals, which allow you to itemize monsters from ritual. You can place up to four vessels in the map device alongside a map to add their monsters to the ritual. Substantially increasing both the difficulty and rewards. Okay, interesting. Experience. In addition to uh, rebalancing every ascendancy class, we substantially work, reworked Dead Eye, Inquisitor, and Elementalist. The aim of these reworks was to redistribute power with in each ascendancy passive tree so that there are plenty of new ways to build powerful PoE characters. All right, let's see what we got for Occultist. Additional curse. Uh, that's pretty much the same. Two chaos resists. More chaos damage. Okay, easy wither. That's pretty good, I guess. And that's the same. Cannot be chilled, cannot be frozen. More cool damage. Freeze, uh, okay. Every four seconds, freeze. It's interesting. A little bit of a defensive thing. 40 flat ES per second. That's pretty good. Cannot be stunned. All right, that seems kind of cool, but I'm not really a CI character or ES character. Like, fan of it anyway. Oh, Hierophant. This is uh, piquing my interest a little bit. Plus four to minimum endurance charges, plus four to minimum power charges. That's awesome. I like that one. 20% uh, extra maximum energy shield. Or 20% maximum mana is extra shield. Increase AoE per 50 unreserved maximum mana up to 100%. Less mana cost of skills, less mana res reservation of skills. Brands have 100%. I'm not really a brand character, so I don't really care too much about that. Um, Arcane Surge. Increase effect. That one was always pretty decent. Uh, more damage per summon totem. Yay, totem buffs. 5% of maximum mana per second for each summon totem. 1% totem. Oh, they got rid of uh, summon two totems at the same time. That sucks. But that's pretty good. And then... Uh, the extra mom's pretty good. I kind of like these changes. That power charge and endurance charge one is awesome, though. Uh, what else have we got here? And then for the other one, for Slayer, uh, that looks pretty much the same. Maximum recovery rate, yeah. 
I think that one's pretty much the same. I can't remember. Reduced damage taken while leeching is pretty good, though. And then accuracy, melee range. 15% more melee man damage based on proximity. Okay, that seems all right, as long as the proximity is pretty good. And then that's been the same. Kill enemies I have. So call, that's the same. That's the same, I believe. And... Base critical strike got buffed up to 8% again. Alright, so Slayer is kind of decent. But I, I kind of like the Hierophant changes. I wasn't too fond of the summon two totems thing going away though. Uh, so let's look at some new items here. Uh, fire over damage time multiplier reduce ignite duration. Chance to ignite. That's interesting. And weather does not expire. That's a pretty good ring. I think. I like my ignite build, so maybe maybe they'll make a comeback. Alright, so for boots. Um draw the scorch ground. I'm not a fan of those to be honest. Like the there's too many drawbacks. Even though the damage does seem good with that, but um, maximum life with sacrificial zeal. Added spell physical damage equal to 25% of the skill's mana cost. Causes you to take physical damage over time for 4 seconds. Interesting. That could be good for my uh, boy vortex guy, but I don't know if the, it would be worth losing the boom boom for, but it would be good for uh, bossing maybe. And then overwhelm with physical. Uh, leak specific item to placid. 20 op alteration orbs. Hydrosphere. New skill. Lightning exposure. 100% of physical damage converted to cold damage. Well, that seems uh, interesting. Trinity support. What does resonance do? Alright, so that's kind of interesting. Harvest has returned. Plant a mana. Having a plant manage it, you will discover portals of established gardens and multiple sects. Each pair of ops carefully awaiting encounter difficulty against. If you can slay the monsters, you'll be spawned, rewarded with the life force and can be used to greatly. That's good. I like that. That might make Harvest like not stupid doing the whole farm thing. That was my biggest criticism about it. Too much micromanaging. Uh, heist. Drops from Act six, 6 onwards. Rogues level up their skills faster. Marker drops higher stack size. Quest contracts are now dropped for you at the next cache as soon as the quest is available. Alright, so uh, seems alright. We'll have to wait until it comes out for sure. So that's my uh, first impressions. Let's get ready to do some more lab in 7 days. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys next week.